Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn to Play series. Today we have a very anticipated game, American Tank Ace, with game design machine, Greg Smith giving the teach. So sit back, grab a drink, and enjoy the session. Over to you, Greg. Howdy everybody, I'm Greg Smith. I'm, we're going to do a quick run through on how to play American Tank Ace. So we're just going to do one quick scenario to, to get your feet wet and sort of get you used to some of the basic game mechanics. It's not terribly difficult of a game. The interesting thing is, is it has some very detailed decisions tactically, but there's also some major abstractions as well. So it's a combination of detail and abstractions. And this is kind of has to be because of the fact that you're not really a lone tank fighting on the battlefield. You are part of a platoon of tanks, maybe a company, you've got infantry with you. All those other forces are notional in the game and, and we just sort of represent them abstractly. So you'll see how we do that by having a uh, action at the end of every round, uh, the random event action, which represents some of these abstracted activities that are going on. And also the behavior of the German forces you're fighting is abstracted to a degree that they might not actually even engage you until you, well, once you engage them, they'll definitely engage you. But before then, they might, you're, they're assumed to be fighting your notional friends or maybe holding their fire. But let's go ahead and start the game. The first thing we do is we go to Fort Knox and do Fort Knox training. So basically the way this works is you do gunnery training. And if you get two hits on the B1 long range chart, which is not easy to do. So you got to get a two through five, roll twice with two dice. And if both of them are hits, then you get this gunnery minus one coupon. I call them coupons, but basically it's, it's minus one to buying that skill. So for example, we're going to eventually get this expert minus one skill and I for train minus one. And you'll see how it works here in a second. But we'll go back to the setup. So gunnery, we didn't get that one. We say that we got a uh, driver's training. We rolled in the mud column. We didn't get stuck in the mud. So now we get the eye for train is minus one. So that means that when it comes time to buy that skill, it'll be a point cheaper. And we'll assume that everybody failed on their weapons training. So nobody gets a coupon there. Now, here's what you actually have to make a decision. You aren't rolling any dice here. You have to decide which of these three areas you're going to spend your spare time. And they give you different game benefits. The extra carousing is interesting because you can get into a bar fight. It gives you a prestige level of one to start the game, which actually matters because you could buy a slightly better tank to start the game with, M4A1. But we're just going to stick with a straight-up standard M4. and for that, we're going to take this extra study time, giving us the expert minus one marker. That's the spare time activity we're choosing, which is number two. And that gives us this discount marker, as seen here. And our driver succeeded on his, so he gets a marker too. These don't help us right away, but eventually they should come into play. For graduating from tank school, we get one experience point. What do you do with experience points? Well, as you get them, as the game progresses, as you get experience points, it allows you to buy these skills. And what are these skills? What do they do for you? Well, they do various different things in the game. Gunnery, it's easier to hit. Weapons maintenance, you get to ignore your first machine gun jam of a mission, that kind of thing. So they're basically minor game perks, if you will. But they very definitely could help to keep you alive. You should read the uh, listing of all the different skills and what they do for you. But that's eventually you'll you'll buy those skills. We're starting off the game. We don't have any skills. And it's just me and my four buddies. Next thing. So now that we've graduated from tank school, we're going to set up our mission. So how do we do that? Chart pre-combat. First thing we do is we roll A1. So the mission assignment chart. So we roll two dice and we get a seven, movement to contact. Now you'll notice these major events, there aren't any active major events in June 1944. They don't show up till July 44. 
Anyway, the point is we don't have any right now, so don't don't even worry about it. If you roll a six, you would just ignore this. But we roll a seven, so we got to move into contact. Okay, great. Let's roll the weather. We roll a seven again, so it's clear weather. That's fine. It's not raining, not muddy. That's good. Terrain. Now this this could be a bear. It spoke a lot of bocage to start the game for a couple months. And Bokash is really nasty because the infantry starts off right in your face because the mission starts at close range. However, we roll four. It's the woods, which means, as you see by the notes here, the mission starts at medium range. All right, good. So we're starting in the woods. Medium range, clear weather. Now we go to the enemy force generation chart. So who are we facing on our movement to contact mission? We are facing... 2d6, roll a 6. We've got a 1 recon vehicle, that's R, 1 tank, and 1 HT, half-track. By the way, here's the little legend down here. Tanks, recon, half-tracks. W is wheels for a truck. AT is an AT gun. All right, so we know that we've got 1 tank, 1 recon, 1 half-track. But specifically, what are they? Well, the half-track is always a SD. KFC 251. No problem. There's only one half track type. But we have to roll to see what kind of tank it is. We roll a six on a 10 sider and we get a Panzer 4H. Okay. We roll for the recon vehicle. We roll an eight. We get a 234 slash one. So that guy is actually, he can hurt us. He has a 20 millimeter cannon, two centimeter in the turret, small turret. So uh, that's problematic. If we had any infantry, we would actually roll to see what their quality is. Why does this matter? Well, the morale levels, higher morale troops are more, more likely to shoot Panzerfaust at you. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully you're not running into, you know, SS guys or Falschermakers right off the bat. But we don't have to worry about that because we only have one infantry and he's loaded. So we don't know what he is. yet. Well, actually, we would see what he was. We just say he's normal, Wehrmacht. So now we get to roll where the enemy sets up. So for each unit, you separately roll a one or two, they're in A, three and a four, they're in B, five or a six, they're in C. So roll a six, the recon car, he's over here. I rolled a two for the tank, he is here. And I rolled a three for the half track. So he's, we got one in each area. All right, fine. Having done that, we're going to now shoot first first round with the understanding that anybody we shoot at is automatically going to start targeting us during the well we don't want to mess with the tank because we, we want to kill this half track and the reason we want to kill the half track is he's loaded with troops and the problem with that is that we don't even want to let them get out so if we kill the half track we'll, we will also kill the troops that are loaded in it so how do we do that? Well, we're going to fire our main gun. We look at our tank. We started the mission with an HE loaded. I had three APs loaded in the ready rack, three high explosives, one smoke, one willy peat, or white phosphorus, uh, to use the technical phrase. So we're going to fire this HE round because HE is effective against half tracks. So we're firing it. Boom. Fired. Reload. I think we're going to load an AP round to replace that. So we fired an HE round. What does that do? We go to B1. We see that we need to hit him with a two through six. It's not raining. Don't have any other problems here. So, uh, so that's good. Two through six. What do we hit? We get to roll a five. All right. So that is an auto kill. No questions asked. You see the note here, HE rounds or white phosphorus that hit always destroy an AT gun, a half track, or a truck. And a miss would suppress a gun. So anyway, so he's toast. So that's good. So we will flip him to the rec column. The inventory doesn't even get to, doesn't even get to unload. Now, this is a bit abstracted. I realized we didn't just literally kill all 10 dudes that were in that half track. Probably killed three or four of them, maybe two or three of them, wounded three or four of them. The point is, is that that squad's rendered combat ineffective. So we just, they're gone. 
the the survivors have decided that it's not worth their uh, time or lives to continue in this fight. So we got a burning half track. That's good. We reloaded with AP round. And I am going to, these guys are going to move. So I'm going to spin my hull towards D. Because I can't even engage D if I'm facing dead ahead. So I spin towards D. All right, so my three targets I can shoot now are B, A, and D, which is bad. All right, so the Germans first turn. They roll a two and a five, so they do not, they're not engaging us. And per the rules, they're going to flank, move towards flanking. Now, notice that the range has not decreased. It looks like they're closer, but they're not. They're just more to our flanks. And that is the end of the first combat round. At the end of each combat round, what do we do? We do the event check. Everybody's favorite. And this is that part where we're basically taking into account all of those random things that are happening with our notional friends, notional enemies that we don't see, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to roll two dice and we roll a nine. Destroy one random German imp. All right. The good news is that we would destroy a random German M. The bad news is there are none to destroy. So this defaults to a no event. As you see the note, destroy a random German unit. This rep represents notional forces fighting with you, having some success. If no German of the appropriate type is on the battle board, treat it as no event. All right, so nothing happened. There wasn't anything to kill, so that's the end of that. All right, so we did the end of round event. We are now in round two. The Germans have flanked. Now, are they shooting us? The answer is no. Well, they will be. The 4-H will be. But they both roll no. So the 234 is fighting somebody else, and so is the tank, but he's going to switch targets to us because we're going to pop him. So the first thing we do is we roll at him. We roll a 7, which if we look at the charts, we had AP loaded. 7 is a miss. All right, that sucks. Second round, Adam. We're going to roll an eight, which again, just barely misses because we had a minus one. He was a previous target this round, so suck. All right, so we missed the guy twice in a row, but he's still we still seen him. We'll go to our tank, fired that round and loaded the AP, fired that round and missed again. So we missed twice and we're going to load in our last AP here. In the ready rack, anyway. So this is not not good. He gets to shoot back. All right, so he is going to shoot at us. And he has seven firepower. He will penetrate us, no matter where he hits us with a seven at medium range. Fortunately, he rolls a nine. So he completely whiffs at us. And now it is time for the end of round check. Notice he only gets to fire once, by the way, per round. So we're going to go to the end of round check and see what's going on. What's our end of round check? Roll two dice. I rolled a 10. Okay, German mortar attack. Well, that's not good. So what happens in a German mortar attack? We get attacked, and they get a minus one DRM. We're on the tank SPG column. So two, three, or four buttons us up and causes a wound check on all crew that are exposed. Stoppage doesn't really apply to the mortar attack. I mean, I guess it would be a hang fire. But anyway, the point is, they're shooting. Minus one DRM. They roll a five. That goes down to a four. Okay, we take a button. What does that mean? Let's go back to our tank. So I start everybody open, because why not? So he is going to roll a three on his wound check, which is not a wound. You only get a wound on a one or two. On a 1d6. So he survives. He rolls a 5, so he gets to button up safely. I roll a 2, so I get a wound check. What does that mean? We go to the wound chart. Roll two dice. I rolled a 6. I get a light wound. I mean, it's not a good thing, but it's certainly not devastating, so I can handle a light wound. So I get a light wound, and then I button up. 
So now we're all buttoned up. The good news is small arms fire and mortar attacks no longer will impact us personally, directly. We are now immune from all that now that we're inside the tank. However, because we're buttoned up, it's harder for us to hit stuff. So next round. That was the end of round event uh, where we I got wounded. Next round. The German recon cars rolls a five, so he's still busy. See, now if he rolled a one, he would get a flame shot on me, you know, but he's busy with other people, so that's good. The tank's on us now, and we're on the tank, so we need to get busy and kill this guy. So we are going to roll a our last HE round that we've got, and we're going to roll a four. Okay, that is a hit. Thank goodness. So now we have to check. Now that we've done that, we need to check if we hit his turret or his hull. One or two is the turret. Three through six is the hull. His hull armor is actually thicker. His turret's a five. His hull's a six and his side armor's a four. So we actually want to hit the turret. So we're going to go and roll main gun chart. Well, first off, we roll as we hit the turret or hull. We roll the two. We actually hit two. We hit the turret armor. Yay, because that's a five. Our firepower is a six. If you look at the tank, you see the firepower here is six. Now, that could be modified by range, but we're at medium range, so it's straight up a six. We're a six. His turret is a five. We have penetration. Our pen is higher than the armor. So we're rolling on the far right-hand chart. Fortunately, but sort of, we roll an 11. Well, that's a destruction. Well, guess what? It, it would actually had also killed him even if we'd have hit his hull. It would have been exactly just, it would have been good enough to kill him regardless. So be that as it may, we knock him out. And we will flip him. He is now a wreck. So we've destroyed him and the half track. Go back to the tank and fire that last round. Okay, and so we're down to a smoke, which I don't want to use, three HEs and a Willy Pete. And I'm going to load an HE. You always get to automatically load after you fire. So now we have an AP load. All right, so end of round, we're going to roll. So we're, this is a problematic for us because we're facing the wrong way. So we're going to have to spin the hull and uh, engage this guy. Luckily, he's not engaging us yet. But we're, first things we do is after we kill the tank, we're going to end of round, and we roll an 11. Well, curiously enough, that destroys one random German vehicle. Well, there's only one left, so that knocks him out. We don't get credit for that because we didn't do it, but one of our sister tanks did that for us. And, but that ends the mission. All right, so that's good. We we retain the battlefield, and uh, it's, it counts as a successful mission. So we finished the mission. It was a success. That's good. What, what we get to do at this point is we actually get to roll for war trophies. We'll roll three and get a Hitler Youth Knife, <laughs> which has a trade value of three, which is good. Uh, so basically, this is just uh, something we're scrounging around on the battlefield after it's over, and this is what we came up with. And we'll go ahead and put that right here. We got one Hitler Youth Knife. And eventually, as the game progresses, you can actually trade these uh, war trophies that you find. You can trade them in for, like, weapons, cleaning kits, and other things. So that's good. We also get a Purple Heart for having been wounded. We get our campaign medal for the, got our first mission to end. And we actually get a Bronze Star because we destroyed two German vehicles, the half track and the tank. So these two, this one doesn't give us anything. It's kind of a gimme. But these two medals actually give us Prestige points. Our prestige level is now two, which will come into play later on in the game when it comes time to up comes time to upgrade better tanks. 
So and there's that cleaning kit we can buy for our weapons, but we're not going to do that quite yet. So that is the successful mission. Uh, and that's the end of the mission. What do we do now? We reload all the ammunition to however we want to see fit, and we go back and we get assigned a new mission. It's now the second mission in June 1944. Because the game actually starts after, right after June 6th, you miss the first week. So there's actually only six missions in June of 44. July and then all the rest of the game, there's eight missions per month. And uh, rinse and repeat. But that's sort of the basic flow of the game. You may have noticed it was real quick. It's real deadly one way or the other. And it will not be unusual for you to lose several tanks. In fact, in the Bokaj, if you start a Bokaj mission with a bunch of infantry, it's Bokaj starts in close range and they all just light you up with Panzerfaust. And you, you might get knocked out on turn two. I mean, that's it's just the way it works. The game is... And it would not be unusual for you to lose several tanks in the course of your career. And that's just a byproduct of the fact that Panzerfausts are deadly and every German tank can basically penetrate you. And the anti-tank guns as well. So it's a, it's a tough life to be in an M4 Sherman. You've got to try to utilize every trick in the book to include going to hull down terrain if it might possibly... Uh, give you a, a thicker turret shot rather than the hull shot. And uh, basically, uh, maybe firing smoke. So there's a lot of different tactical tricks, but the game flows fast. You could probably run a mission in 10 minutes. Basically tried to show you the, the main combat routines, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the game.